Um, and as, yeah, that would be great. Thank you, Heather. As um, it is just a few of us here, um, I was going to call for nominations for a chair of the RTCC RAB. Would either of you like to nominate yourself or someone else to be the chair of the RAB? Do we have enough to um, nominate? Do like, we want to do we want to hold off until we maybe get a few more members? Um, well, I'm actually going to talk about that a little bit later, so we totally can. Um, well, since Sam's not here, I'm going to nominate him. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. I think yeah. that's fair. Absolutely. You know? So I think Sam, Sam could be the him. chair. I think Sam could be the chair. All right. All right. Uh, uh, wait, can we nominate people so, that aren't here? Is that yeah, allowed? Of oh, oh, no. of course. Yeah, okay. okay. All right. So Nathan is nominating. I'm nominating I Sam. Will... Don't they need to accept the nomination? I'm sorry. I, you know, I realize it's not a huge time commitment, but it does. I would think they would need to accept the nomination. Yeah. yeah so, so we can talk about that next time. Sure. Yeah. So we can say we nominate Sam, and then we nominate you can see if you Sam, want to and maybe it. at yeah. the next meeting we can see if he. I'm accepts. just looking towards your that direction. Good. Okay. Okay. So thank you for that. That was that was. So funny. you will chair and, until we get. A chair. Sounds, like, sounds very good. Okay, good, very good. So, um, so basically, what I'm going to do is explain um, the CLNA, what it is and what it means, and go through the findings of the CLNA. Um, and then, uh, time permitting, um, I did get information from the state about the required members of the RAP committee, and there are quite a few people. Um, that need to be invited and should be part of this. And so um, if we have time, I wanted to have a discussion about, about that um, because I know this needs to be a lot more robust um, in terms of attendees. Um, and then I have some hiring updates that I want to share, and, and that's, that's pretty much that. So um, you have a packet, and it's also going to be on your screen here. And so before I get started, I wanted to um, let you all know, two years ago, the full CLNA was completed um, by the former director and, um, and the AOE. And this year, so two years later now, it's due for a uh, review. So this year's is slightly smaller than the original document that you would have looked at two years ago. Um, what we do is we look at everything that was stated uh, and laid out and, and like the goals and objectives two years ago, see how far we've come and compare the data, and then we say, okay, now where are we moving for the next two years? And then in two more years from now, there'll be a full CLNA again, and then the process will continue every two years. All right, so it was very interesting doing this. The whole purpose of this, so this is called the Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment, the CLNA. And the whole point of it was for the staff and the center and the RAB and the advisory board to start digging into the data and asking questions so that you can start to see where the holes are. And what I realized is that there are some assumptions that you can make based on your day-to-day interactions with students and test scores and report cards and all these assumptions that you can make but in fact I'll say one of the assumptions that I did make was that we really need to um, beef up uh, our math and ELA scores and the rigor um, and that we need to to really spend more time focusing on academics um, which is not necessarily what people have traditionally come to the tech center for um, but I didn't realize what I learned as a result of this, which is that RTCC has the lowest test scores of any tech center in the state. And so it's not a, just a matter of beefing it up. It's a matter of completely revamping what we're doing and doing something completely different. Um, and so this gave me um, the, the opportunity to say, okay, guys, this is absolutely not okay. And we're gonna do some really strategic things to make sure that we improve next year and hopefully we can double our outcomes the following year and the year after and the year after. Um, so I have a plan and I'm feeling really confident about the plan, um, but let me go through, I'm gonna give you some data to support the statement that I just made about our math and ELA scores um, and then I'll tell you what the plan is. Um, so, um, like I said, 
Every two years, we have a CLNA that's due. This is our review year. Two more years, we'll do the full, full CLNA. It has six components, um, so and they're all laid out. This is the physical copy of the CLNA. Um, but they're all laid out by, uh, by category. So student performance and Perkins accountability um, data, which is disaggregated by race, gender, special populations, um, looking at how many females in a male, uh, male-oriented program, how many males in a female-oriented um, program, um, all, of, all of that. Um, alignment of the programs to the labor market needs, uh, which is really interesting to look at. The, scot the size, scope, and quality of each of the programs, which we have found some discrepancies between programs, like some programs are offering uh, 12 college credits, for instance, while other programs are not offering any college credits to the students. So we want to make it so that no matter what program you're taking, you have the same opportunity to earn the same number of credits regardless. Um, progress towards implementation of the program of study, um, which is something that because many of our teachers are first-time teachers or they're coming from industry, this is something that through the, um, the teacher prep program we have to uh, work with our teachers so they learn how to become teachers and how to read the program of study and how to know what it means and what it actually how do you take the words on the paper and then say okay we're going to learn we're going to do these things through these activities through this math work through this hands-on work how are you going to teach the things that you're required to teach um, analysis and uh, of and strategies for the recruitment retention and training of cte staff um, and the last one is progress towards implementation of equal access to high quality CTE programs for all students. So that's what I was just talking about regarding um, pro some programs offering college credits and some not, some offering tier two IRCs, some not offering any. Um, so we want to make it so that no matter what program you're in, you have the same opportunities. This chart um, is incredibly difficult to read uh, on the screen. There is, a, there is a version of it that's slightly bigger in your packet, but I'm gonna just break it down for you and tell you basically what you're looking at here. So we've got the negotiated numbers that we as a tech center negotiate with the state for our goals. And so that is what you see, okay, if I can do this. That is what you see right here in the top line is the negotiated numbers by year for each of these six um, these six components that I just read off on the last two slides and then you've got the center-wide average rate so um, that's the second line down and then after that starting on the third line you've got every program um, and so the general gist of this giant chart is that we're doing pretty well in almost every area except for math and ELA. In math and ELA, we are very, very, very low. Um, now, our students only have academics twice a week. They have two math classes and two ELA classes a week. When I got here, I was told that this was how, this was how it was done. Next year, we will be doubling the amount of days that students have math and the number of days that students have ELA. This means that students will have math four times a week, and they will have ELA four times a week. And my plan for the fifth day of the week is for that to be a callback time. So if you are not passing your classes, you're failing, you are missing work, you haven't handed it in, the teacher can call you back and say, you guys can't go to your program until you finished your academics. Yes, so my view, um, and I believe that many many of us that are here this year and that will be back next year share the view ooh, 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 share the view that tech is not only for students who can't sit still in a normal desk in a, in a normal setting um, or those who work best with their hands those things may be true however a tech center needs to be rigorous the students need to have grit they need to be able to do not only the basic math and English that the high school is doing, but they need to also be learning a trade. It should be, in my opinion, harder. You should have to work harder because you're learning a career, but you're also learning your academics. 
And so what, what I really need and what I've been really hoping to do is to raise the bar. Um, when you raise the bar and you let kids know what the expectations are, kids are resilient and smart and capable and they will rise to meet that challenge. I've seen it so many times in so many different schools that I've worked at. Already it's happening. We have created a rubric that is pretty comprehensive. Um, quite frankly, it's, it's, it was a lot for teachers, but they did it. Every single student that applied had to go through a pretty rigorous process. We looked at attendance, behavioral discipline, um, interviews, teacher and counselor recommendations, um, personal, some people had personal essays for their programs. The application, application process was pretty thorough. Um, and so each teacher filled out a rubric and scored the student based on, on the evidence. And then we decided either students were accepted, waitlisted, or not accepted this year. Everyone was notified, and at first our numbers started off somewhere around 90. I had some concern because I knew that we weren't accepting absolutely everybody that we were saying, if you want to come here and you don't meet this criteria right now, we want you to work hard at your sending school and try again next year. We are open to you but we want you to really work hard to earn this because once you get here, you have to work hard to stay here. After semester one, if students are not passing their classes, we're going to ask them to return to their sending school because that's not a learning environment that's working for them. But it gives us something to say, you love it here, you wanna be here, we need you to work hard, we need you to go back to your callback time, we want you to work on your math and your ELA so that you can really concentrate on the things you need to be prepared for your program for when you graduate. And I really believe that with the right supports and the additional ELA and math, that we can absolutely help students rise to the challenge. One thing that isn't represented in the CLNA, and I'm personally really curious about, I'm actually really excited to see, is the numbers from the spring. So we are gonna be doing work keys testing very soon um, and so we don't know what our efforts so far this year have yielded because work keys testing has not happened again for the spring. But one thing that was interesting and I think really important that we did was that instead of having large classes with one math teacher for the whole tech center and one ELA te teacher for the whole tech center, we had very small classes that allowed for really personalized learning and really uh, we had two teachers of each subject with really small groups of students. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, that our work key scores represent a big, or at least, you know, I hope, it, I hope our scores have increased. You know, you would think that they would. We're gonna continue that again, have these smaller classes next year, but with double the exposure to math and ELA. So whatever increase we have this year, should be twice as much next year with that setup. Um, we're also planning right now, we're planning on figuring out what kind of um, textbooks we want to use, but we are talking very seriously about sophomores having personal finance and business math, juniors having algebra one and some geometry, and seniors having algebra two and some geometry. Um, so currently we don't have that set up. We're doing um, very specialized math that is um, specialized to each program. So the really interesting thing about this is that you have individual teachers that specialize in each of their given programs, and then we have two math teachers and two ELA teachers. What if you have math within your program and ELA within your program that is specific to the trade that you're learning? And you have that every day. And then on top of that, you have your algebra and your geometry in addition to your very specific math that relates to your actual program. As compared to what we're doing right now, it's going to, it's exponentially gonna grow our math scores and our ELA confidence. I really believe that. Um, and I'm really excited about it. The kids might not be excited at first, but when they start seeing their own test scores and the fact that they're accomplishing really great things and they're really starting to get it and it's clicking, I think they're gonna be really excited too. And I think the parents will be really happy. Is there gonna be a correlation between how the math teacher teaches math and how the trades teacher teaches math. Yes. 
So during PLC time, um, we meet, we currently meet more so with our math teachers, but um, we will continue to meet with our ELA and math teachers next year, and that's their opportunity to say, well, right now this is what we're doing, this is what we're building or learning in electrical, this is the type of math that I need, like, um, please don't ask me to explain any of this, but they were learning about voltage drop, um, I'm sure you guys Amp probably range. know, yeah. okay. Yeah. So there was a whole math lesson that I witnessed um, regarding voltage drop and how to calculate it, and then that was specifically pertaining to what was being taught in electrical. Um, and I think diesel also, and I'm not sure if auto was involved in that. But yes, we're gonna continue to do it, but it'll be more robust than it even was this year. And it wasn't bad this year, it was pretty good this year, but it's gonna be even better next year. So uh, on the following page, um, Let's see, so the following page is the CTE program alignment with labor market needs. And the first column where it says tier two IRC and or college credit, that shows um, which programs offer, offer either, either or one of those two things. Um, construction trades, uh, I need to do some more research that came about through this process uh, in the last week um, to See, so we may actually be offering IRCs, but I need confirmation that that's the case. So, um, but uh, education services and criminal justice offer college credit in their programs. However, next year I want everybody to be offering college credit, and I don't want it to be an optional situation. If you're taking the class, you're also taking the college level class. That way. There's nobody who can say like, oh, yeah, the opportunity was there, but I didn't really feel like doing it. No, you're here, you're gonna get the credit. That way everybody can say, there's, well, there's not a single person that can say, I can't do college or college isn't for me. If you want to try, the opportunity is there, and you might want it, even if you don't need it now, and your plan isn't to go to college right now. You might in 10 years, or you might after you realize that it's really hard work doing labor or working with your hands or you know wiring a house and crawling in basements like you might find that at some point you want to go back to school and maybe you want to teach other people how to do it so you'd already have those credits and you already would have an experience with college to know that yes I can do it I did it in high school and if I did it then I can definitely do it now um, if you look at the following column it says meets work keys industry math benchmarks and then ELA benchmarks is right next to it. So the ones with the check boxes are the ones that um, where the classes met the benchmark. So you'll see like electrical, manufacturing, and education were the three classes where the benchmarks were met. So it, really, it needs to be all of them. Um, but like I said, we need to really spend more time doing math and ELA. Um, and so uh, you'll see that um, the last column represents uh, the careers that are in high demand. Um, I believe personally that there are other careers that could also be added to that list that are in high demand and, and would be something that we'd be looking at later on. Um, but almost all except for um, digital filmmaking and culinary arts are currently in high demand programs. Um, all right. Our next chart is the size, scope, and quality by program. So um, if you look at the first column, the check boxes where it says minimum quantity of students indicate that we have six or more students in each of those programs. So culinary arts, dental assisting, health careers, and education services currently do not have six or more students. Um, we are working to increase all of those numbers um, and increase our numbers overall. However, our, uh, our classes are definitely, our enrollment is continuing to go up. Um, last week we had around 120 students accepted for next year, which is great. Um, currently we have 126, so, um, and it's only May 8th. We still have the rest of May, June, and all summer. Um, in the fall to accept more students um, that meet the criteria. Is that including Raven? No. Nope. So that's just the regular? Okay. 
120 is just what we have for next year for specifically RTCC. Yeah, Raven, when they kind of graduate the Raven program, the goal is to get them over and do a full program at RTCC. That's usually how it works. Okay. Yep. All right. So all of our programs are aligned with uh, the Vermont AOE proficiencies. They are all also aligned with industry needs. The fourth column um, shows which ones have uh, tier one and tier two IRCs, which is also in a chart that you looked at a moment ago, so it's some duplicated information there. You'll see which ones offer um, college credit. Everybody offers work-based learning except for pre-tech. Um, we have several programs participating in tech organizations um, and our equipment and technology software um, is up to date uh, pretty much I mean we're really we're, we're pretty good the state has been very generous with us um, our advisory board committees um, are also I, I feel very involved and supportive um, and they've met twice this year and that is that has gone really well on the next screen, you will see, um, again, so this some of this information is the same information but looked at from different lenses. So this is the program of study analysis. So you look at all the different programs of study um, for each of the programs, and then these are just color-coded, um, and you can, it just kind of helps you see where we need to work on things. So really, if you focus on the pink, um, where it says not started. So aligned with academic proficiencies regarding college credits. This is an area that we need to work on next year, like I've said. Um, so the, the ones that are blue mean that they have college credits aligned with the program. The pink is where we need to do our work. Um, in progress is green. Um, and you'll see content and proficiencies are vertically aligned to prepare students to transition seamlessly to the next level of education. So whatever that is, if it's a college program or if it's a, um, a program to learn a, a trade, whatever that is, um, I think that there are definitely improvements that we can make on our transition services for students um, transitioning out of high school and into the next phase of their life. So that's an area of growth for us. And then the very last column, each student um, uh, has a personal um, a personalized learning plan and that was something that we did not work on this year it absolutely needs to happen um, colored it pink because it is also an area that we need to concentrate on next year on the next slide there were several surveys um, that helped us gather data for this um, CLNA this one here represents um, the faculty and staff recruitment, retention, and professional development. So um, one thing I do want to point out is that the charts, the chart here that you're looking at only represents 16 responses. So I just want to point that out, that it's not a super large group of people. And so one of my goals at the end and I'll get to that, but I do say that I would like to get a higher percentage of people participating in our surveys, just so we can get like the most accurate information. Um, so, 16 responses here. How many, how many? 24 people could have responded. 24. So it's interesting. Eight. Interesting about the chart is your agrees and neutrals always add up to 93%, so that means your disagrees always adds up to 7% kind of indicates that either you just didn't like things across the board, which is why it's always 7%, or the others were, you know, they're on the more positive side of things, you know, a little bit to the left or right. Yeah. So it seems like it's pretty specific to people, but I think, just as an observation. I think that that's very true. Um, and I think that also when this was take this snapshot was taken very early on in the year, um, it was still the fall, maybe later fall, but still the fall, and I feel like um, perhaps the, but that's when we had to start this. And so this, this was when this came out and it was a snapshot in time. So anyways, um, that's okay. It's okay. Um, it says, uh, you know, you have, I enjoy working at RTCC, um, and the, you know, 25% are neutral, 68.8% agree. Um, faculty and staff is the resources they need to provide strong outcomes for students. You get a lot of neutral responses there and 31.3% agree. 
Um, our materials and technology are in keeping with industry standards. Um, again, you have 56.3% neutral and 37.5% agree. Um, and RTCC provides me with opportunities to stay current in my industry and technical field, and you've got 50% neutral and 43.8% agree. Um, so, yeah, it's a snapshot in time. Um, faculty, staff, recruitment, retention, and professional development. So this is, um, I, I have this like sinking feeling that I missed some something that we did as a PD. So if we did, I apologize. But um, we did equity work with with Esther Charleston. Um, we had math integration PD um, with our with our Betty. Um, we had math PLC almost every week. Um, select faculty went to the Collins Writing Program. Um, at Lake Mori, and then we did a PD specific to math teachers to help them integrate math um, and work with the math teachers to do specific uh, math specific to their program. Next year, we want to continue with the integration, the math integration PD, because especially as we're bringing in several new teachers, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, um, they all are going to need to understand like how we work together, that we cannot be in silos with our math and ELA. We need to work together with our program teachers. Um, continue with the math and ELA PLCs, and then there will be CAD training for select faculty. All right, um, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you, and you can totally check it out um, for yourself, but this is all about recruitment, recruitment, application, and retention plan for students. So these are all the recruitment type things that we do per month. Um, you'll see on here open houses, um, obviously just our monthly newsletter, a community events that we do, uh, visits to sending schools, we call it like our road show. Um, and we go out in the fall and just do like a meet and greet, just um, ourselves with the other administrators from the sending schools just so that we can um, meet and talk about what the needs of the schools are and and what our views are for um, for moving forward so that when they talk to their students they know what RTCC is all about um, so there's there's that okay progress towards improving equity and access so um, these were let's see we had 81 responses um, and these were student responses, so I'm just going to briefly go over them. My program teacher treats me with respect. You've got 90.3% people agreeing with that. Um, students in my program treat me with respect. These are students talking about other students, 98.8%. Um, um, I feel safe in the hallways, 93.8%. Um, I do not experience discrimination based on my sex, race, color, creed, disability, gender, national origin, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity. 71.6% agree, 9.9% disagreed, and 15 point, oh, that's an 8, 18.5% 18 said it's not applicable. <laughs> um, but I think that it's pretty evident, even just visually looking blue, is that they agree. So I'm engaged in my program at RTCC, 98.8%. I understand that what I'm learning in my program is preparing me for college or for work after high school graduation, 97.5% agree. So I feel like the students who are there understand what they're there to do and what we're there to do and it looks like from those respondents they feel pretty safe and to me that equates to pretty happy um, progress towards improving equity and access so this was a really interesting survey we surveyed students at sending high schools who chose not to come to our school and asked them why they chose not to come, and these were my favorite responses. I really like these ones. My favorite was the first one. Cell, <laughs> Cell phones, phones not allowed. allowed. <laughs> Which we talked at the beginning of the year about our cell phone boxes, and that's gone really well. Um, so I thought <laughs> that was kind of awesome. Um, my friends are not at my friends are at my current high school. I get it. They don't want to leave their friends. Um, a teacher or counselor told them that it wouldn't be a good decision. Well, that bummed me out, but that's another reason for why we go and we visit the sending schools prior to our roadshow, just to talk like counselor to counselor, director to principal. Um, 
you know, I, I, this one was cute. I think I have too many absences this year. Well, we only allow 10 unexcused absences. So this, this child, I did see like an application and they were like, oh, I'm pretty sure. And I, they had some crazy number of absences, like over 20. And I was like, you are correct. That is too many absences. Um, and the, the program I wanted was full. And so we do have wait lists for programs and not this year so far. So if, if there's anybody listening out there that um, would like to apply and hasn't yet, um, there's still openings in all our programs. Mm -hmm. um, the next slide um, is current, okay, so current RTCC parent guardian survey. Mm -hmm. um, so my child is in a safe and healthy learning environment. 77.8% 7, of people said yes. Um, there's a, I'm not sure what the percentage of the neutral is. Um, there, there was some disagree, 16% uh, disagree. Um, but again, we're looking at 18 responses. Um, so RTCC staff have been helpful in discussing and planning my child's learning experience. Um, that goes back to the PLP, and I think that, like I said, is an area of growth for us. That was one of those pink columns that I think that we could do better at. 38.9% um, agreed. Um, oops, oops, oops. And 39% um, were neutral. So I think that there we can do better. So I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, and we have a plan for doing better. So these are the steps that we are going to take to improve um, in areas that needed improvement, like I just said. Okay, so we're going to work on improving our math scores. I already did describe how what how we're gonna do that and what the plan is, as well as CLA scores, so I won't bore you with that again. Um, we want to increase the number of students attending college after RTCC, and I should also put in there that not only do we wanna increase the numbers, we wanna increase the students ability to believe in themselves that they can if they want to, even if that's not their plan right now, by allowing them to an opportunity to earn college credits. Just knowing that they can do it, even if it's not now, maybe in 10 years, that would be an improvement. Um, we want to increase the number of college credits in every single program, um, increase the overall access to tier two IRCs, so some programs don't have any, um, we want to increase math integration into program content. We did a good job this year, I think, at that, but we want to obviously continue that and continue to increase it. Same with ELA. Um, we started um, in the winter increasing the math PD that we provide to teachers. I think we were on a good path there. I want to keep doing that. Same thing with the ELA PD. Um, I, here's my survey participation. I want to improve the number of survey participants in the future because I'd really like to have just like a bigger pool of voices. Yeah, I, I just had a question about that, sure. especially with students. You have them captive in the school during the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, right? Oh, yeah. That's a really good point. Um, yeah, so teachers probably told the wrong them. Choose a word. <laughs> Cap captive, well, right? Are, yeah. Captive yeah. audience. Captive but audience. I, I hear what you mean. You say, okay, everybody, we're doing the survey now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then right. they say, I don't want to do it. And then, yeah, geez, right? Boy. And so <laughs> we want them to want, I think, something that we could do better now that I have seen that we only got 81 responses, is it explain many, to them how that's important. That's out of how many students? It was like 120. 67%. Yeah. So, so 40 students chose to sit there and do nothing while the other students yeah. all did the... Yeah. Maybe, okay. um, maybe I could have done a better job explaining to them how we're going to use the data. Maybe yeah. I could have done a better job explaining what the CLNA is. Um, Maybe they wouldn't have participated no matter what. I don't know, but I'm going to yeah, try a different tactic next boy. time. Yeah. Because usually, they, I mean, in the past, now this was pre-COVID, students that were in the tech center liked being in the tech center. Mm -hmm. So you'd I think, think they still do. Then, you know, <laughs> But it's getting a little bit, it's getting... They're experiencing that we're asking, so hard to, I'm trying to You're asking out. more of You're, them you're having, having them step it up and right. they're Yeah, and I'm sure they, that's that always change. happened. I'm sure it's happened yep. every year. So 
So that's I'm gonna, just saying for these particular right. students this year, right, we're increasing the expectations. The fact that they can't have their phones in class is driving them nutty. But they're doing it for the most part. They're pretty good about it. They're pretty respectful. Mm -hmm. Behaviors have gone way down. And you know, I walk in the hallway and I'm greeted with kindness and respect. I'm treated nicely by the students. Like, it's a nice atmosphere there. It's a happy place. So, I don't know. Yeah, and you catch a teenager on a bad day. I remember you be, said it was early on. I don't even so think they, were, they, I didn't know everyone's names then. <laughs> it was fall, and um, it was fall, and, and we were all new. The yeah. leadership team yeah. is all new. Yeah. So we yeah. had to spend some time, some time earning their respect and getting to know them, learning their names, you know, like all those things right. that come. I was out for, I had surgery for three weeks, so I was sort of at a disadvantage too while I was out. Mm -hmm. Time kept moving, yeah. you know, and so I think if you surveyed them now, it would be a different response. Oh, that's my opinion. But okay. We want to increase the number of non-traditional students in each program um, and have specific plans for how to do that in um, some of the programs that have lower enrollment, which I won't get into now, but I did talk about in the, the actual CLNA that we're going to submit to the state. Um, we are working on the recruitment of fac uh, faculty um, that hold a bachelor's degree or higher because I think um, that when you have a teacher who has gone to college, that even if it's an associate's degree, where, that they've experienced college, it makes it a little bit easier for them to say, to talk from experience and to get their students interested in also taking college classes and teaching those college classes and getting them to buy into it because their teacher, who they respect and admire so much, also had that experience. Um, and so, looking for that, we want to promote literacy strategies um, through the program teachers and um, the curriculum corner did an awesome job this year of sending, um, oh, it's the next bullet, but Wall Street Journal and Newzella articles several times a week, like the most fascinating things you've ever seen. Some teachers, uh, I would walk through the school and see them using those articles and having the students read and respond to them. Um, and that was a way to, to and they were all tech-based articles, um, but it was a way to work in the ELA uh, right into the program. And so I'd like to see everyone doing that just because it's amazing and, and why not? Um, but it's, you know, baby steps, we're getting there. Um, and then the last thing is that our science proficiencies are really not where they need to be. Um, and we need to work science into every program and really have a specific way to do it, not just sort of like a, oh, well, this could be considered science. Like a specific part of the day that's dedicated to science. So we have a lot of work to do, um, but we have a plan. And like I said, more it's more specifically laid out in here. Um, but that is the CLNA. Are there any questions about the CLNA before I move on to just the last parts of the agenda? No. Okay. Well, you know where to find me if you have questions later. Um, so very quickly, because I know we only have six minutes. So um, I wanted just to go back to number six. So I had reached out to the state regarding um, the rules for the RAB, and so I received these from Ruth Jerky, and so I just, I copied and pasted them here just so that everyone had them um, on record here, but, so the first one says, so one member from each public high school in the center service region, elected by and from and among the members of the high school board for a term determined by the high school board. So um, that is an area clearly of improvement for, for me to work on here with the RAP. Um, number two, uh, the superintendent or his or her designee of each supervisory union within the center service region. Again, an area of improvement. Um, the good thing is, is that I do talk with um, with several of the superintendents and I think that it's not gonna be too much of a, a long shot to ask to, to help arrange that. Um, usually I talk with them about busing um, or <laughs> days off, but nonetheless, <laughs> communication does happen. So uh, I think that will be not too, too difficult. Uh, number three, one member elected for a term of three years by and from among the school board um, from each sending district. And Okay, um, so each sending district needs a person um, to represent them on the RAB, so something to work on. And number four, 
Three additional members elected by the RAB to represent the interests of employers or employees provided that no two terms shall expire in any given year. And so um, I have a specific uh, company that works uh, with our electrical program that I would like to reach out to. Um, I don't want to name names, but I'm hoping that they, once I reach out to them, that they would consider joining the RAB. And then, um, well, actually, I, I have ideas for who number four um, people that we work with in the community that might be really interested and that are active advisory board members is really what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. So, anywho. So, I'm a little yeah. confused. So, so um, there's one member from each school board of the, each sending district, but then number one is also one member from each high if it school? Does, if it does not have a high school. So if we had a... Oh, a, if it doesn't have a high school. Right, so if we had a... We don't have any sending districts that don't have a high school. Well, Chelsea Tumbridge, right? Right. Do they send here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so... Well, that, they send to the... Yeah. yeah they school send. choice. Right, yeah, so yeah, they, 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 they should yeah. also be represented, I think, is what that's getting okay. at. Makes sense. Like, you would... Yeah, yeah. You, I think it's there because you might tend to forget them. Got it. That, no, that makes sense. Um, so there's that. Okay, and then just very quickly, three minutes. Um, so uh, I have six potential new hires, and they're listed as potential new hires because they have not um, received contracts yet, but that process is in motion. Um, I am also waiting on reference checks for a couple of these people, but we have found some really awesome candidates that I'm very, very excited about. Um, Manufacturing and fabrication, um, I am proposing, will be changed to design engineering. And so um, we have a design engineering instructor uh, who is a graduate of the Rhode Island School of Design in design engineering, um, who is one of the instructors that would be teaching students CAD programming. Um, very excited to have him in the works. Uh, we have a student services coordinator, a math teacher, digital film instructor, a data manager, and a dental instructor all um, making their way through the pipeline of uh, the hiring process. So we're really excited about that. Which classes you do not have any potential hires yet that are vacant? Mm -hmm. I see electrical is on the school spring. And what about? No. Oh, it was. What? The teacher was under negotiation. Oh, yes. And okay. they have they have decided to stay. Okay. Yeah. So we are retaining our electrical teacher. I, I believe it has been taken down at this point. Let me double check that. Okay. But then, that was, thank yeah, you for asking yeah. about that one. I was like, what? No. And then I hear <laughs> that Jim Barry's retiring. Um, do you have yes. a new teacher for Raven? Well, so Raven, I do not hire that, for Raven. That's, that's a different Kayla, stuff. that's the yeah. special education director. Okay. Um, she had, it's going to be a very difficult one to fill. Um, there are people that are qualified, but folks that are qualified and want to do that type of work are hard to come by. Yeah. Because um, we tried oh, to I actually know. expand <laughs> the program yeah. a few years ago. Um, she's had one person um, who is of high interest. I'm not sure where I'm they are quite down. in the process what? at this point in time. Okay. Um, but it's uh, it's one of the areas where if they can't get somebody, they're going to have to re envision you know, what to do uh, with that program. Okay. I think just as a comment, um, I think you guys have a PR problem, and with the public, um, Nika, that you should probably address. A PR problem? Yes. Please tell me. I will say people in this community are really concerned about where the direction of RTCC is going, and I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's a lack of communication. So. Just as some advice, there's rumors flying around that <clears throat> we're trying to close RTCC, but, <laughs> but it's really we're changing the expectations, right? Uh, like you just that's said. Not even so, true. I would just, whether you take to social media, whether you do some PR work, what <laughs> you be very transparent on what your expectations are and the direction you're going to, I think would help a lot with. Um, community feedback okay thank you and we can go into that later i, I, I would i would ask that I as, as that you're hearing stuff from people that mm -hmm. if you can actually direct them 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. Well to be of able course. to talk because the amount of damage that happens in this community by the right. back channel that's not quite correct has been immense. Well, and that's why I think also, you know, I know the power of digital marketing and social media yep. as an organic feedback. If you post more of what's going on in RTCC mm -hmm. and your expectations and you do it in video form or however you feels the best way of doing it. I've seen that be very impactful in a positive way to the community because they feel like they're informed and they're part of it, right? Mm, um, okay. And I know we're running out of time. I want to go into a little bit of <clears throat> more with you, but I, I would just keep my ear uh, to the ground, as they say. I know there's change can create a lot of rumors or can create yeah. a lot of concerns. Um, I like that we're going to ask students to be challenged more, I think, getting out in the real world, you're gonna, always going to be challenged. Um, and we're going to set them up for the best foot forward for success. We just need to convey that to everybody, not just in Randolph community, but all the sending schools all as sending well. Schools. And you might see an influx yeah. in students wanting to come here just based on that PR. You That's know? great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I think we're out of time. Um, are there any final thoughts or questions? Well, do you want help from us at all in terms of trying to get more people involved with the RABS? I, the RAB? like, I think I would like some help, and that is nice of you to offer. I think what I would like to do first is reach out on my own and see um, what response I get and then come back to the rev and say this is where I'm lacking response mm -hmm. and then okay. coming up with a plan yeah. sounds great and then I can report on how that's gone the next time we meet does that sound like a plan mm -hmm. for, okay. I think the only other thing I have a little bit concerned about is you know numbers are the lowest they've been and we're ramping back up I think they were in the 150s Two years ago? Uh, no. The the scores have been on a three year decline. The uh, attendance. And, attendance. No, attendance. About the and, yeah, too. and and this was prior to this this director. Right. Um, they had reported the beginning of the year enrollments yep. that were high, which is typical, but by mid year they were in the one twenty ish range, one thirty. So we've always lost about thirty yeah. students on from beginning to end. Okay. Yeah, and, so when you ask for teachers or looking for teachers with a, at least an associate's degree usually that comes with more pay yeah so i'm just keeping in mind the numbers because i'm a numbers guy students attending to you know having to pay the teachers for their education and, and everything you know how are those numbers working is there a number we really need to get to to be able to bring that quality of of, of staff here there, you know what is the what are what are our discrepancies there's a possibility, um, and so for a year or so ago, the, the tech center did not submit the Perkins grant, and yeah. they lost the ability to use that funding to pay for um, staff members, um, and so they had to come out of the regular budget. So if you go and you look at the budgets for the tech center, you see one year where all of a sudden Per student, the tuition went up by four thousand dollars per student because of that failure to do the Perkins. Okay. Um, Nika is going to have the opportunity as she's bringing new people on because once somebody's paid in the regular budget, you can't put them back on a grant. Okay. But as she brings new people on, she might be able to put them back in Perkins. Those costs will go down, and it'll make it a lot more attractive for folks to come here because uh, the cost is not supposed to impact our ability to call in. But because it is a tuition that they pay, if our tuition is high, then I can guarantee that people are... And that's the sending interested. schools that pay that tuition. Yeah, we pay it as yeah, well. So right. So that, that change um, has cost the taxpayers in this district $250,000 a year since that, that failure to put in Perkins. And that's just in this town? That's just in this town. So because we have 60 kids there, 4000 a pot, right. 240000 <laughs> Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all. That's why I was wondering all those factors that come into cost and per kid, and then education and paying our teachers and staff. And yeah. All that. Okay. Yeah. So as long as those tuitions come down, it's it's much more attractive. Right. Yep. Especially for school sending. Okay. That's pretty much all I had. Okay. Thank you so much. Move to adjourn. Okay. Do I say that?
Yeah. Well, I move we adjourn. Oh, there we go. So I can have 606. Sam? Oh, wait, he's not here.